Hey friends, welcome back. I'm Li Ying, and we've been talking to some amazing entrepreneurs. And today you can see that there's a nice gentleman sitting next to me, mm -hmm. and that is Jim. So Jim, could you please tell us a little bit more about what you do? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Jim. Uh, I'm a filmmaker. Uh, I recently relocated from Shenzhen. I've been living there the last two years uh -huh. to Shanghai. Uh, and what I'm doing is making primarily films uh, for companies. So I make a lot of corporate videos. I think that there's a lot of really cool internet companies now in China, companies like ByteDance, companies like Xiaomi, mm. uh, so many different internet and technology companies in China that have really cool products, but they are often not very good about communicating what it is they do and who they are. And I think that what, you know, what I do and what my team does at Relay is we find ways to help Chinese companies explain what they do to people outside of China. When did you start your business? This company started yeah. in 2016, January uh, of 2016. So we're almost at the five-year anniversary as of next month. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And what made you want to start this? Well, uh, before I had my own company, I was working for a British advertising agency. Uh -huh. And so I had helped them set up their office in Beijing from 2013 until 2016. Uh -huh. And so I was their kind of local country manager for China. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing that, I started to realize, you know, I had a really good team, I had relationships with clients, I had, uh, you know, an understanding of how to run the business. And then once I did that over a period of three years, I was starting to think, hmm, you know, maybe I should actually set up my own company uh, instead of working for someone else. Mm -hmm. And I initially wasn't sure uh, if, you know, it was a big risk, right? It was a big risk to decide to leave a secure employment and then set up my own mm -hmm. thing. And it was scary. Mm -hmm. uh, but I decided to do it at the end of 2015 mm -hmm. uh, and then set up the company in January. Yeah, It's like you've been learning a lot about the local culture and mm -hmm. then you started right here. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's one of the advantages you, that your company has. Well, I think that the longer you're in China, there's a funny chart that's on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, which is about how much you understand China as a foreigner. Yeah. And when you first come here, it plots it out over about five years and 10 years. And at mm -hmm. the beginning, you think you know nothing. And then it goes up and up and up from year one, two, three, four, five. It goes, I think around year five, people think that they understand China completely, yeah. right? And then actually after you get past five years, your perception of how much you understand start to go back down, 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 almost to zero. Mm -hmm. So I feel like as a foreigner, you don't really know what you don't know. You come, you spend some time here, you think, oh, I start to get it. I start to really understand how to get things done in China. Mm -hmm. And then if you're even longer, you realize how little you actually knew mm -hmm. to begin with. Uh, and then you get to a point where you realize that you don't know very much at all. <laughs> so I think I know a little bit, uh, but equally, I think one of the important things for us has always been to have uh, people who give us really good advice. Uh -huh. uh, so for instance, like Chinese staff, uh, we also have a Chinese venture capital company that is our investor. Mm -hmm. And they've given us a lot of really good advice over the years about how to grow the business or not grow the business, what relationships and partnerships to go for, which ones not. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I think a lot of times Westerners think that they know everything. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's very wise. I think it's always really good to have trusted people in China who can give you advice 
and also tell you when you're making mistakes because mm -hmm. it's easy to make mistakes. So how has your business grown all these years? Yeah, it's we're doing all right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you learn a lot over the years. I think in the beginning, when I was thinking about having a company, I thought that you know the thing you wanted to do was to have a lot of people running around doing stuff. Yeah. So at various points, like in my previous company, we had up to 15 people. In my current company, at the max, we had about 12. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing I would tell a lot of new entrepreneurs is more people is not better. Because the more people you have, mm -hmm. the more costs you have, the more you have to pay for everyone's salaries, and not only salaries, but things like insurance and taxes and all this mm -hmm. other stuff. And it actually doesn't make your life that much easier. In fact, it makes your life a lot harder. Mm -hmm. uh, because all those people are, you know, mouths to feed and you have to figure out ways to make money from your clients so that you can pay your employees. Mm -hmm. So over the years, uh, I think what we've learned is one well, number one is trying to control our number of people, our staff, mm -hmm. to just have the essential people in our team. Uh, and then I think the other one is figure out one thing you do really, really well and only do that thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of entrepreneurs see a lot of opportunity in different areas and they try to do everything. Mm -hmm. But for us, we just picked one specific service and got really, really good at that. And then there's a lot of different opportunities that come up, but we ignore all of them and just focus on the thing that we're good at. Uh -huh. So a lot of Chinese companies are, are innovating and creating all kinds of really amazing products, right? I think that part of the reason for this is a lot of Chinese entrepreneurs and founders are coming from engineering backgrounds or STEM yeah. backgrounds. They're usually uh, people with a lot of technical knowledge, but they aren't really, you know, China doesn't necessarily have as built up of a tradition of, you know, people who are doing marketing, people who are doing storytelling, people who are doing creative communications. Mm -hmm. So our opportunity as Westerners is to help Chinese companies not just create films, but really to tell their stories and figure out how to explain what it is they do mm -hmm. to people outside of China. How do you advertise mm -hmm. your own business? since you're mm -hmm. advertising other people's right. yeah, work. Yeah, it's hard. Uh, initially, we would do a lot of work to let people know that we existed. So one of the things that I would do is I would go to a lot of industry events. Uh -huh. uh, there was, you know, for instance, this has all changed this year because of COVID, but in the mm -hmm. past there was these big events like one called the Consumer Electronics Show, CES, mm -hmm. and that would be in Shanghai in May and also in Las Vegas in the US in January. Uh, and then basically everybody would get together in the kind of tech consumer product sector mm -hmm. and they would have these booths inside of like a huge exhibition hall mm -hmm. and it would be hundreds and hundreds of different companies and what I would do usually with my head of business development is we'd go to these events uh, with a huge bag and this bag would be filled with uh, not just normal business cards but USB business cards so we would take our work and we put it on a USB and that USB would be part of a business card that would like fold in and out oh, of the I card see. itself. I've seen that. Yeah. And what we would do is we would walk into these events and we'd walk up to basically almost every single booth and we would hand them the card. And that would be one person's job to give them the card. And the other person would have an iPad. And on that iPad, we'd have our work. So basically we would find in the booth whoever was the marketing person. We'd show them a 60 second video of our work. We'd hand them a USB card. And we'd do that over and over and over and over and over again. We did that for three years. And not just those two events, but we were probably doing at least, I don't know, eight to 10 of those a year. Mm -hmm. So a lot, a lot of work and just handing out cards, so many of these different USB cards. And that was good because later that created situations where that person would bring the card back to their corporate headquarters mm -hmm. and then later that person or somebody else in their office would see the card and they would call us and say, hey, uh, we, we saw that you do videos and we'd like to work together. Mm -hmm. But that was just hard and that was really too hard. And then and the second thing I'd say is like word of mouth. So mm -hmm. if somebody sees your work, then they're more likely to want to work with you. Mm -hmm. So video production is nice because there's something very visual mm -hmm. that comes out at the end. And oftentimes what will happen is somebody has seen some project that we've made. Mm -hmm. And because they've seen that project, then they're going to come to us and say, hey, I like project A that you did. Can you do something similar for us? Mm -hmm. So that happens a lot as well. Mm -hmm. I'd say we did more intentional marketing in the beginning. And then now it's much more about the work speaking for itself mm -hmm. and people seeing the work and then coming to us because they see the work. Mm -hmm.
what's it been like working with Chinese clients? Yeah, well, uh, there's an expression in Chinese that I think is kind of useful when yeah. people talk about the client relationship. It's called jia fang yi fang, mm. and it describes this contract terms, you know, party A and party B. Yeah. And oftentimes, working with Chinese companies, uh, there is a little bit of an expectation that a vendor is going to do whatever the client says. Even if the client has a bad idea, the vendor might be expected to do that thing. Mm -hmm. So I think for us, one of the things over the years that we've always tried to figure out a way to do is to work with our clients not just as jia fang, yi fang, but more as partners. Mm -hmm. We try to find ways to put ourselves on more of an equal footing and recognize that there's things that they, they do really, really well. But also for them to realize that, you know, we've been in China for many, many years. We're also filmmakers with a lot of experience and we want to find ways to let them uh, allow us to be experts. So getting, I think, them to realize that, you know, we know what we're doing and also that we have a lot of relevant experience is good because then it allows us to really work with them as partners. But I think mm -hmm. often when I talk to other entrepreneurs, you know, they get in really challenging situations because they aren't able to build that kind of trusted partnership relationship with their clients. And uh, what's your vision for your business? Yeah. Well, so I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, we've done corporate video for the last four years. Yeah. I see a big opportunity now, which is that uh, in the world we live in, people don't trust uh, traditional institutions anymore. So in the United States, people don't trust the government. Mm. You know, you have a lot of scandals with companies, even in China, like Luck and Coffee, that mm. you know had situations where companies were doing things that were untrue or publishing information that was untrue and deceiving their investors. Mm -hmm. You have, you know, all these things around the world where people have less and less trust. And on the opposite side, what's emerged is this whole new industry, which is about influencer marketing, yeah. which is about people who are real people, they're not institutions, but they're individuals who are telling their stories. And I think that the media economy is changing and that people who are influencers actually, you know, they're called influencers because what do they do? They influence people to do things. So I think that the world is changing and, and what I would like to do in that uh, area is what we're planning to do and we're already doing is we're setting up our own uh, channels, which is creating influencer content, which is helping Chinese companies tell their stories, but through the lens of a character named Jim, mm -hmm. who is a longtime Silicon Valley expat who lives in China, mm -hmm. who has lived in China for a long time. Yeah, I yeah. know you're not talking about like a traditional uh, definition of success, mm -hmm. but uh, how do you attribute your current status mm -hmm. right. uh, of uh, living a pretty good life in China? Mm. Like, yeah. Well, uh, I think that like the thing about being able to be successful in China is about a willingness to try things and to take risks. So that for me has been the case all along. I just told you the story about Martins, the strongman we brought to China. Yeah, that's a risk. And that was, I mean, I didn't know anything about yeah. organizing events, bringing over a strongman or putting on any fitness things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times in China, I've been in situations where I did not have the you know, it's the, the like qualifications mm -hmm. to do a certain thing. And I would just say, I'll do it anyway. And then just hope that I can figure out how to do it later. And I think that's probably the key to a lot of my success. Also, you know, I mentioned we raised money from a venture capital firm in China in mm -hmm. 2017. Mm -hmm. And that whole scenario was because uh, I had been making a video for a company that made hard drives. It was called the Malpan, uh, the cat drive. Mm -hmm. And this cat drive company, uh, their CEO and I were chatting one day, and this was when we were still based just in Beijing. And he said, hey, uh, you should raise money from a venture capital firm. And I was like, venture capital firm? There's no way they're gonna wanna invest in a small video production company. And he said, no, just send me your business plan and I'll send it to them and then you'll talk. So I put together a business plan. I just looked on Google, like what is a venture capital business plan? And I created one, sent it to him, and then he forwarded it to the VC. And then two days later in Beijing, uh, those guys wanted to meet me. They wanted to meet me at a Pacific coffee uh, in the central CBD area in Beijing. And I thought it was all kind of BS. I didn't think it was a real mm -hmm. thing. I was like, there's no way these guys are gonna invest. So I was like wearing crummy t-shirt, sweatshirt, sweatpants, you know, and I get to this meeting and there's three guys and they're all in like complete suits, you know, serious, serious proper suits, BC guys. 
first question they ask is like, tell me about your revenue predictions for the company in the next three to five years. And I'm like, oh my God. And they grilled me for like two hours. They just grilled me all these different questions about the company and where I want to take it and where it's going to go. And after the meeting, I called my business partner. I was like, yeah, I screwed up this meeting and we're not going to get the investment. And they called us three days after that and said, after the meeting, we've considered it carefully and we'd like to make a seed investment in your company. And, and they did. Uh, and this whole thing happened only because I just sort of decided that I was going to try to do this thing. So it was like, number one, it was kind of a risk. Number two, it was kind of scary. And number three, I think like it's just this willingness to, to try. Uh, I think a lot of people in a lot of situations don't try. They assume at the beginning when they face a certain obstacle or challenge that they will fail. And because they think they're going to fail, they avoid the thing. Mm -hmm. But I would always encourage people to don't just waste your time doing unnecessary things, but if there's a real opportunity that's exciting to you, find a way to try to pursue it. So yeah, thank you guys. And please check out Jim's channel on YouTube. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And stay tuned for more interesting entrepreneur stories. Bye for now.